The latest Ubuntu Linux installer weighs in at 5.8 gigabytes, and this is a 1.44 megabyte floppy disk. It's over 4,000 times smaller. So today, we're installing modern Linux on a single one of these, with room to spare. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy laughing in the face of minimum system requirements, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Why do modern operating systems need so much storage? Are they really more advanced or do they just have more bloat? Well, I think we all know the answer to that. But what happens if we strip away all that bloat? And I mean all of it. Could we really have a modern, bootable, functional Linux distro in 1.44 megabytes? Well, it's time to dust off the compiler because we're building the Linux kernel with almost all of the options turned off. So we're gonna be following the Floppinix guide here on GitHub, which was actually just recently updated, which is actually a guide for the absolute bare minimum stuff you need to compile into the Linux kernel to have it boot, along with how to compile BusyBox, which is a Linux shell, basically, to be as small as possible while still having some features. So we're gonna be following this guide here on Arch Linux, which actually is what the writer of this guide used, or at least an Arch-based distro. And for our first attempt here to make sure this boots, we're gonna follow everything to the letter. And in fact, we are gonna be booting this on a 486DX machine. All right, first error from the instructions here. It does not like the letter Y in there. So we will replace that with 11. There we go. All right, CD into our Linux directory, and then we are going to do make with architecture x86. We're cross compiling and tiny config to give us a minimal configuration of the kernel. And then we're gonna do good old menu config. So in here, we're just gonna take all the options that Floppinux asks us to. So processor, good old 486, block layer, device drivers. We're certainly gonna need floppy disk support and we only need XZ compression. In file systems, we only need DOS support because this is a floppy disk. And library routines, we only need XZ compression, but not any of this weird stuff here. And that's it. That is the Linux kernel with almost all options turned off. Well, let's go ahead and compile it. Hopefully jump cut to Linux is compiled. Where's Jeff Geerling when you need him? All right, compile successful. Let's see how big our kernel is. Look at that, 829K. That's a little more than half of a floppy disk. All right, so next up, we're gonna compile a minimal busy box, which is all of the Linux utilities that you know and love, just in super tiny alternative form and all compiled into a single binary. So first let's download and extract the BusyBox sources. And then once again, we are cross compiling and we're gonna use the all no config option to turn all the options off. We are using Arch Linux, so we need to use this quick fix. And now we get to pick what functionality we wanna fit onto our floppy disk. So in menu config here, we'll just choose everything Floppinux wants us to, and then we will see how much free space we have. All right, it wants us to choose support files over two gigabytes. Not like that's gonna be an issue. We're gonna build a static binary with no shared libraries. So it's all one file. And now our core utility. So we want cat, which can print out files. I guess we'll turn all these options off. Copy command seems important. DF, that's gonna show us our disk usage. Echo, that's important. LS, so we can see what's in our directories. And we'll just turn all this stuff off. MV, that's our move command. RM, which is delete. Kind of want make directory too. 4.5 kilobytes, we've got room. All right, sync and test. Sync, that's gonna be very important if we save files to the floppy disk. And test, yep. Under editors, we're gonna have our truly only full software package, Vi, so we can edit stuff. Uh, we don't need any of this support. Init utilities, we can uncheck all this stuff. For our shell, we're gonna be using the Ash shell, optimized for size. Yeah, we'll choose help built-in, even though I don't think we really need that. 
and alias support. All right, that should do it for configuration. Just set up the paths and compile. <laughs> And just like that, BusyBox is compiled. Now we need to set up file systems for the floppy. Luckily, we can just copy paste our way into it. All right, I have prepared a special welcome message here. Yep. Welp, you're running Linux from a floppy disk. I'll we'll make init tab, init RC, and then compress all this down into a single file. Finish syslinux.config, a sample file, why not? And now we can use DD to create an empty floppy disk image. Pretty quick. We can install syslinux directly to the floppy disk image and then mount the floppy image and install all of our stuff to it. And it's actually done. Let's just make sure it boots in the QEMU emulator before we actually write this to a floppy disk. It does. <laughs> Look at that. That is a 1.4 megabyte floppy disk image that just booted Linux, modern Linux. All right, let's write this to a floppy disk. <laughs> All right, I've got my iMac USB floppy drive here. Bright red floppy disk, so we don't lose it. And there it is on SDA, so we will do sudo dd input file is equal to floppy disk image, output file is equal to dev sda, block size I guess is 512, status equals progress. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah, floppy drive is making floppy drive noises. Ooh, I don't think this floppy disk is good. Nope. All right, let's try that again with floppy disk number two. Much happier floppy disk noises. All right, well, here we are. One floppy disk full of Linux. All right, we have what should be a bootable floppy disk, and I have here a rather minimalist computer to boot it on. And we're only gonna hook a single floppy drive up to it. Could this possibly work? We'll find out right after this quick word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop solution for all of your PCB assembly and fabrication needs. Do you need to prototype something? Build a run of a project? I bet PCBWay can handle the whole thing, the whole way through. PCB prototyping starts at just $5 for 10 pieces with as little as a 24-hour turnaround. Right now, it's the PCBWay Christmas sale, which I think is the best sale they've ever had for one reason. Free purple solder mask, in addition to matte black and pink. There's also 10% off transparent Somos Lido 3D materials and up to $435 worth of coupons up for grabs. Do you need PCB assembly? How about free shipping and a free stencil? There are so many good deals during the Christmas sale. You're just gonna have to check out the link down in my description below to find out. So for everything from prototyping to 3D printing to mass production, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. All right, we have ourselves a 486 DX2 66 megahertz on this motherboard here, along with as much RAM as I could find. No case needed. We're just gonna drag one this thing right on the desk. The floppy controller does not work on this board, so I have this ISA card to compensate. We're gonna need some video, so I have this Viper PCI card right here. Since we'll be taxing this 486, I've got a heat sink that I'll just drop right on top of the processor. That should be fine. I also have a network card, although I didn't install any networking drivers. Maybe we can try that later. We're gonna go with this cheapo ATX power supply here. I'm gonna have this nice adapter for ITX. And a nice little fan for this poor 486. Just lay it on top. These wires have to be connected. This is actually the power switch connector. There we go, now it's always powered on. Oh, I guess we should find a monitor. All right, well, here is our janktastic Linux box. The only storage connected is this floppy drive with Linux on it, hopefully. Let's power this thing on. Oh, it's booting. Hey, look at that, we have like 100 megs of RAM in this thing. Nice. Oh my God, look, Sys Linux. This thing is freaking booting. Welp. All right, after going through this many disks, I found, <laughs> I found one that seems to work. If you wanna know why all of my floppy disks don't work, 
check out the video where we hosted a website from a raid of floppy drives. Oh yeah, it's really booting this time. Look at that. Oh, there it goes. Look, it's loading BZ image. That's our Linux. Boy, this thing is sure making a lot of floppy drive noises. Oh my God, we are booted into Linux. Well, you're running Linux from a floppy disk. Let's see, ls, nothing. Where are we, cd dot dot, there we go. Look at that, it's a Linux. We even have one application. Look, it's Vi, hello there. We just wrote a file. Let's see, what other fun commands do we put on here? Make dir, yep, there's our directory. Home should be connected to persistent storage, although I'm not actually seeing anything here. Touch test, no, we don't have touch. Vi test. Well, I'm not sure if persistent storage is working. Let's see, what else did we install on here? Oh yeah, look at that. We have echo, we have mount, we have unmount, we have df. We can see how much space we have available. Proc mounts. No such file or directory. Oh, I guess we have to, uh, all right, let's see if we can install any uh, additional programs on here. Okay, so first of all, it's absolutely wild that this works. We booted modern Linux on a 486 off of a floppy disk. That's crazy. Now, as far as what's supposed to happen here, we should have persistent storage mount slash data, which mounts with a bind to the home directory. But I wonder if I inadvertently turned off the options that mount needs to actually do that. So what I would like to do is recompile BusyBox and give ourselves some more utilities. So we're going to remove the file system here and go into BusyBox and we will do make arch equals X eight, six menu config. And it has all of our previous selections already because we didn't delete the configuration file. Let's go into Linux system utilities, go down to mount, mount helpers maybe. Not quite sure why it didn't work mounting the home directory. All right, let's see about some more utilities. I definitely want you name for the hilarious screenshot potential. Let's see, Debian utilities now, oops. And then in the shell here, I'm going to select POSIX math support so we can run maybe a miniature NeoFetch-esque type of app like pfetch. I don't think we need help support. All right, let's see if this compiles. Nice. And back in our kernel configuration, let's recompile the kernel with some more features. We'll leave networking support for now because that's gonna be pretty big. Okay, so I've recompiled everything with a few extra options, but there's one more thing I wanna do, and that is put a fetch application, actually a shell script here, onto the floppy disk. So before I compress the file system, I'm just gonna download fet.sh, which is an entirely shell script based, super minimalist fetch. Ideally on the system, it will look something like this. Although who knows with our super stripped down kernel, what information is actually available. So fet.sh, the file, come on GitHub, view this as raw. We'll just w get that onto the floppies file system. Let's just chmod plus x, the script. And why not just make it executable for everyone? Not like anyone's gonna be logging into our floppy disk remotely yet. All right, and here we are in version two of our floppy disk Linux install. Let's see what we have here. Oh yeah, there's our fetch application. Let's see, did it mount the right stuff to home? It did not. Don't know why that doesn't work, but we are going to try to run our fetch to see some system stats or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, this is a full real Linux install, so we can edit our files right here with Vi. So let's edit fetch. Let's change it to not suppress error messages. So we can see why it's not working, I hope. Oh, we don't have printf installed. Hmm. 
Well, that would be helpful. All right, back in menu config here for BusyBox. And I think we can add printf here. There we go, printf. And I have also enabled networking and recompiled the kernel off camera. And we are going to use if config to hopefully configure the network and to see if we're actually online, ping. All right, let's recompile this. All right, hopefully jump cut to we have a new install. All right, here we are in our new install. Let's see if everything is in here. Yeah, fetch. And we have networking installed, I hope. And I also installed the ISA drivers in the kernel because this 3Com Etherling 3 is an ISA card and I've only installed the drivers for that specific card to try and save space. Socket address family not supported by protocol. What does that mean? <laughs> we have ping, we just can't ping anywhere, I guess, because whatever this means, does this like need IPv6 or something? I installed the TCP IP stack and we're pretty much out of space on this floppy. Oh yeah, DF is looking at the RAM drive. All right, let's see if we do mount dev ft0 to slash mount. Code page cp437 not found. Hmm. Mount slash t ms dos dev ft0. Invalid argument. All right, well, we are missing something required for that. Well, at least we have fetch. Maybe fetch will work. Fet.sh. Oh, it did something. <laughs> uh, just nothing of consequence. Um, let's see, vi fetch. All right, let's turn off suppress errors. Comment that out. And try it again. All right, obviously GTK settings aren't there, but I don't know what it means by bracket not found. By catch. Okay, well, apparently I don't have the bracket version of test available. Perhaps I can just do that. Let's see if line 19 gives us an error again. It does not. All right, line 26. Get rid of this. I have no idea if that's gonna work. But hey, look at us. We are coding booted off of a floppy disk using software only installed on that floppy disk. Okay, I have systematically removed all of these square brackets and replaced it with the older test syntax. Let's uh, put suppress errors back on. Let's see if we have a fetch app now. Let's see. Fetch.sh, fet.sh, boom. Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> Look at that. CPU, Intel 486DX2, memory 93 megs, kernel 6.14.11. Look at that, we did it. Okay, so I know that at a surface level, running modern Linux from a floppy disk on a 30 year old 486 computer doesn't seem that useful. I mean, it's kind of impressive, sure, but there's hardly any room on this thing for anything else. But that's kind of missing the point. This is an exercise in seeing what minimal computing is really like. You can run modern Linux with a file system in less than 1.44 megabytes. And we also got a good look at what it's like to actually compile the Linux kernel. But, I think we can shrink this down even more and fit a full working TCP IP stack on here, as well as a server or two. I mean, how funny would it be to serve an entire website from a single floppy disk? But that'll have to wait till next time. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And I just wanna give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.